Let's learn how to use code snippets inside of VS Code. So snippets are just templates that make it easier to write repeating code blocks like for loops or conditionals. This saves us a ton of time because we don't actually have to write out the entire code block. All we do is fill in some information like object or variable names. This speeds up our programming quite a bit. So let's see how it works. I'm in a JavaScript file here. And if I type in for to start typing the for loop, what it will do is it will give me an actual snippet. What you can see over here on the left is this is the snippet symbol, and then this is the name of the snippet, and then over here on the right is the description. So you can see it says for loop. If I hit enter, it's going to give me a template that I can then fill out certain variable names. So now you can see I have multiple cursors on this index variable name, and I can rename it to anything that I want. What I'll do is I'll just say I. Now IntelliSense opens up here, and I don't necessarily want to fill any of this out. To move to the next symbol, so it would move to the array word, I would have to hit tab. But if I hit tab while IntelliSense is open, it's going to fill out this snippet for the if statement. And I don't want that. So instead, I'll hit escape to get out of the IntelliSense and then hit tab to move to the next object, which in this case is the name array. From here, I can name it to something else. Since I don't actually have an array initialized in this file, um, I'll just create an array with brackets. Then I can hit tab again to go to the next object. And the next object is the name element. And I can name this whatever I want. I'll just keep it as element. And then I'll hit tab again to actually enter the for loop. And now I can put any of my logic that I need to write in here. So now that I've filled out this for loop snippet, maybe I want a different for loop. If I start typing for and then I hit I, what's going to come up is a snippet for for in, which is a for in loop. If I hit enter, you'll see that now I have a couple other objects that I can rename. The first one being the constant key, and the second one being the object that I'm iterating over. For this case, I'll just keep it as key. For object, I'll say element. And then if I hit tab again, I can now rename the element to el, hit escape, hit tab again, and now I'm inside of this for in for loop. Now you'll notice that had a certain name for in. Well, there are actually a few different for loops that have different names and they do different templates that you want to choose from. So if I say for of, it's going to be the for of for loop. And if I hit enter, you'll see that this is the for of for loop inside of JavaScript. So those snippet names are actually searchable inside of IntelliSense, but you can also search them inside of the command palette. If we hit control shift P, it opens up the command palette. And then if we say insert snippet, we can hit enter and search for all of the JavaScript snippets that we may want to use. So the first few up here are going to be the ones that I have recently used, but then we'll start getting into ones that I could potentially use if I want. You notice these all have different names, like creates an anonymous function by doing ANFN. These are names that you might have to memorize in order to be fast when you're inserting a snippet inside of a file. Some things are relatively easy, like you could start writing async function and it will fill it out for you. But others may be a little bit harder to memorize, like, like CDUP here or CDM. Granted, you may not be using these nearly as often as like the for loop or if conditional. We can then select a snippet from this list, just like we were doing with IntelliSense and it will automatically place it where your cursor is at. So you can also create your own snippets. To do that, hit Control Shift P to open up the command palette and then type in configure snippets. From here, hit enter. And now it's going to ask you whether you want to create a global snippet for every language or if you want to create a specific snippet file for this project, or if you want to create one for a specific programming language. For this tutorial, I'll just type in JavaScript and create a snippet for that language. When you hit enter, it's going to open up a file that's the programming language.json inside of your user snippets directory. If you've never created a snippet before, you'll be met with this file that currently tells you how to create a snippet. If you have created a snippet before for JavaScript or for whatever language you're working with, then this would just just be a normal JSON file with the snippets that you've created. So I've just added an entry into this JSON file and I named it for loop. And I'll walk through each one of these pieces separately. So first is the prefix, and that's going to be what you're starting to type in order for IntelliSense to show this snippet inside of the view that it shows. You can have actually any number of prefixes and also IntelliSense will trigger based off of certain aspects of the prefix. So I could start typing F and then start typing C. And what it'll do is it'll show the four cons snippet for me to choose. Next is the body field. And this will be the actual template that we're going to end up filling out. You can see I have just plain text here all the way up till this dollar sign. 
where now I'm defining a variable. In order to have tabbable elements inside of the template, what we do is we have this dollar sign curly brace and then we number the input and it always counts up. So the first one that it will come to is actually one. And then the second one, once you hit tab, will go to two and so on and so forth. The last one will be where your cursor is placed at once you're done with the snippet, which will be dollar sign zero. So you can see inside of this, we have the number and then we have a colon and then we have a name. And this will be the default name that's given to that particular field. So if I were to delete this, it would actually just fill it out with nothing and you would have to type in whatever you wanted to name that particular variable. Again, we just have plain text and then you'll notice that there's a comma here because this is actually an array. For each entry into this array, there will be a new line present. So you'll see that this is the first line of the template and then this would be the second line and then this would be the third line. Then once we're done with the body, we can also add an optional description if we want to. For this, it just says a for loop. Once we're done with this, we can hit control S to save this file, close out of it, and now we can actually use the snippet inside of our file. So if I go outside of this for loop and I start typing for const, it's gonna show the snippet that I just created. You can see it's called for loop. And then if I hit enter, now I have the elements that I can traverse. So the first one is array and I can do whatever with this field. So let's just make it an array here. And then element is the second option once I hit tab and I'll just call this something and then I'll hit tab again. And now I'm inside of the for loop and I can type whatever I want. Now, another option, instead of a default placeholder name, you can actually have a choice inside of here. If we wanted to make this a choice, we would, instead of having a colon, we would have a pipe operator and we would pipe on both sides of the choice that we wanna make. Maybe we wanna call it element or we wanna call it L or something else. And then we end it with another pipe operator. So now this will be a choice. When you hit tab, you'll see an actual choice. So let's save this and let's see what it looks like inside of the file. So I type for const, I hit enter. Now I have array. I'm just gonna make this array again. I'll hit tab and now you see IntelliSense actually gives me an option for three different choices. I could do element L or something. I'll hit L and now I can continue my logic. So there are a lot of built in snippets for you to use inside of VS Code, but some people have actually made their own snippets and you can find them inside of the extensions marketplace. If we move over to the extensions marketplace and then click this filter icon, then go to category and then go to snippets, it's gonna show potential snippet extensions that we can install. Now, most of these are gonna be the syntactical linter or debugging tools or extensions that are specific for certain languages. And that's because they kind of come all in one inside of the extension itself. You'll get the linter, you'll get the syntax highlighter, and you'll also get the default snippets that it comes with. So you can see like C and C++, extension actually doesn't come by default inside of VS Code. You have to install it separately. So once you install it, you can see that you have a category snippets down here. And anytime you write C or C++, you can type in the D the built-in snippets for this extension and you'll get those options as templates. You can see that snippets are really useful in speeding up your coding. I would highly implore you to utilize them anytime that you can. And that is how you use snippets inside of VS Code.